Hey, this is Rick for Mike and Rick Outdoors, and we are back at the Miramonte Reservoir, and it's November 15th, I believe, 2022. Gorgeous weather we're going to have here this week. However, it's going to be only like a high of 35. Lows are going to be down at 5 or 10, but right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this tent up, and it is from Cabela's, and it's a Kodiak canvas, and I'll put information up on the screen, the exact size. It's a 10 by 14. But now you'll see it set up. In the background, you might be able to see the lake is already icing up. We're not sure how we're going to fish this tomorrow. We're probably going to be breaking some ice. We watch for some more videos to see how that works out. But let me show you how this tent gets set up. Now, I will say, I have never set this tent up before. I should have done it back home to make sure I had everything, but I didn't do it. I have extra stakes. But let's get to it, and let's see if I made a big mistake by not setting it up at home or maybe I got lucky. So there's doors on the front and back. There's a Kodiak canvas you know, emblem or the words right here on the back, but also over here. So I don't think there's a front or back. It's just, uh, I just had it set up wrong because I want the front to face this way. One nice thing that Kodiak has done is they've supplied really nice thick stakes about a one foot long. So I've got, I brought stakes of mine that I had bought, but it looks like I have plenty of good stakes and they didn't get cheap on them. In case you don't know, I always angle the stake towards the bottom towards the tent the top away from the tent uh, otherwise if you do it the other direction it could with high winds it could pull out it still might pull out but less of a chance this way I will add, I made one mistake already, but the wind's not real high right now. The wind's coming from my left to right, so I should have staked that in first. Oh well. Actually, I can make up a little bit if I go to that other corner first, and then do this corner. And then I like to put my corners down first, and then come back to the side pieces.
There it is. There's the front. And I put it in backwards. Okay. So have you noticed? I made a big mistake. But this ground is so hard. It's so hard to get these stakes in because it's frozen, plus there's some rocks. It's true, the doors in the front and the back are identical. However, if you see the picture, there is an overhang. And it's pointing this way. Which may not be a bad thing, because I'm going to leave it. But the last time we were up here, even though the wind's coming from this direction right now, of course, that is the north. Oh, man. Can I call myself a name now? I am not taking these stakes out of the ground. So I'm going to live with this overhang being on this side or right here. Probably use the other side of the door to go in and out of the tent all the time. I use this if it were to snow or something, but I got this gazebo, whatever you want to call it here. So there you have it. Another mistake by Mr. Rick. Got all down. That took a lot. Okay, so I need to tell you guys something real quick about putting these together. There is a sleeve right here that slides back and forth. You want to make sure it slides onto the shorter one, not the longer one. Because uh, I was trying to do it here. It, for some reason when it came, it was on this long one and I couldn't get it to, you know, put it to, uh, go together and, and to, to put, be able to push it down. The other thing is, at the very end of these, and I'll show you an image on the screen, make sure the knob is pointed down because the side poles go into it. So once uh, this goes down over, the sleeve goes down over the end, then you can push this together. And I'm sure I'm gonna make it a whole lot harder than it looks. And I think you don't wanna, make, make sure you don't, uh, Get your finger caught in here. Well, that worked out better than I thought. So then, slide the sleeve over. Once that happens, there's a knob here and here, keeps it in place. Stretches that real tight. Then, you come over here to the ends. And one side, I think the right way to do this is you stand this up and you put this in this knob here. That's why that knob needs to be facing down. And then down here there's this piece that sticks up and you should be able to just, you know, make it look a lot easier than it is. There, perfect. Now for the other side. It's probably is a lot better with two people, but I wanted to see how well it goes up with just one. 
I will say that last piece right there, pulling it by yourself is a bit challenging. You got to really pull it towards you. Well, I got it pretty tight. There's no creases in the floor. Okay, since I've got this on the wrong side, that's just, like I said, the way it's gonna stay. Let's go look at the other side and put up the, the tarp or the overhang on the other side and I'll show you how to do that real quick. Okay, my mistakes are for your benefit, right? And even though I have this in the back, you know, that's all right. Now, I probably should do something here first. I didn't really follow the instructions explicitly, but isn't that what guys do a lot? I, I do read instructions a lot, but sometimes I don't. Okay, so we do have to make a knot. I need to make a knot. I don't remember the knots. Oh well, I'm gonna make an ugly knot. You ever make an ugly knot and everybody can make fun of you? Going to do it twice. This is just a stupid knot, just to let you know. It's, I think it's called a stupid knot because I just did it. So basically I did it like a triple knot. But you really want, you know, this has to go over the top where that pointed part sticks out on the canopy so there's one knot but again another stupid knot if anybody hasn't coined that let's go ahead and coin it it's Rick's stupid knot yep it's an ugly knot too it's not just stupid it's ugly see my daughter was in search and rescue at Gunnison on the uh, mountain rescue mountain rest well, search and rescue team anyway it's at the Gunnison uh, or the Western University there Colorado Western University and not only did they have to do a lot of knots but they had to make them look pretty I failed by the way they got tested on them too and she did really well so you put this pointed in through and then you put the knot on top now this is where it'd be great to have two people now this one here I'm gonna angle that that way so it's supposed to provide the tension. Yeah, there's how it works right there. It provides the tension right there. And then you uh, put a stake in the ground. So I really don't want to redo this. Let's go ahead and pull this up here. Angle it over here. Again, you want to wrap this around this first, down around the stake. Then you hook it on that, and then I think you just go ahead and pull and provide tension. Now let's go do the other side. Maybe there'll be a good reason why this overhangs on this north side. May, you know, even though I was stupid when I did it, maybe there's a reason. So, there we go. Let's go ahead and put this stake in real quick. Wrap it around the stake. Come up here. We'll hook it on this wire, this rope. And then we're gonna pull, just provide a little tension. There we go. And then I guess you could adjust these as you need them. Not bad where they're at. And we'll Put a little more tension on this one. And there you go. Had a big mistake here. It's a little bit low. I'd like it to go a little higher. But I could probably put the stakes up or the, these pulls up higher, straight up. But since I probably am not gonna use it, I'm not really worried about it. Let's go take a look inside the tent real fast. All right, this door is open. There's a window plus the door. And there's these ties here. Let me turn around. And you think you're out in the middle of nowhere, it'd be all quiet. And then we're right in the middle of a flight path. 
probably going from Salt Lake City or Phoenix to Denver. And it just always interrupts my videos. But it's going away now. So we'll just wrap this up super fast. And then I'll show you inside the tent. Well, let's go look around the tent first before we go in the tent. It's, a, it's not a completely vertical wall tent. And then here's the back. See the doors on both sides. And the other side looks just like this, so I don't need to show you that. And I'll come inside. Not sure how well. I know you can see it really well. But there are, a, there's a door on both sides. That's a window. There's not two doors. Well, there's a door on the front and back, or that would be front and back. And then there's some uh, pieces that are, that you can hang up here to put some gear in. But it's a canvas and it's really nice. It looks like it's really good construction. And you can see the window there. If you want to use it in the summer. Up at the top. Well, there's these little hole, there's little, little clips or something. Not clips, but you can string things through. And then there's a vent back here. Now, this is something I'm glad they have. Because I was a little bit concerned about when I have the propane heater in here. I, needed, I need to have some uh, air continue to flow inside. It's a really strong looking uh, a bottom uh, floor of this tent. I'll have the specs for you. Up here is one more vent. I'll get it open. Let's we'll start with it open. And there's also these little hooks here around the tent. So if you want to hang things up, maybe you want to glam camp a little bit and then you want to hang some lights up. But there's a there's a pouch down at the bottom, if you want to call it that. Sleeve, so, uh, same thing on this side over here. And then I'm going to show you something real quick. There's some stuff that actually gets hung up in here if you want. And let's go take a look at that super fast. All right, first of all, there's this netting. And I believe it hooks up uh, right here. And I, I really wouldn't probably put it here. I would put it on this other one. So we're going to turn the camera around real quick. Since I'm planning to only use these as windows, then these here go up. It looks like they hook here. And this is a storage area. So here, these 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 uh, holes or hooks here, what I was pointing out earlier, they could be for lights if you wanted to, or they can be for this netting. I'm not a good cameraman though because I'm in the way of the video. All right, so there you have that. It actually sits up fairly high. You could walk under it, but you could put some things up here, some lightweight things. I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to weight it down too much. Now, there's something else. There's two other of these. Okay, so I think for me, I would put these, I mean, you could hang them here. I don't really see the reason for that, kind of be in the way. Or you could hang them up on these other hooks up here right where these vents are at on both sides and there's there's holes here i don't know what they're for but if i if i find out i'll actually put a video or a screenshot up and show you what they're meant for all right we're going to put this other one up this one has a lot more small holes in it or little po uh, pouches or pockets So that's nice and convenient. Now you could put them different places around here, uh, but that's pretty nice. 
Okay, so there you have it. The first time I've ever set this up, made some mistakes. Front's on the wrong side. Hopefully that works out in my benefit. It has some several things, uh, features about it. This netting up top for storage. You have storage on the sides down here at the bottom. You've got two doors, one on either side, plus there's a window here. And again, it's canvas. And it's, uh, it's, just, it's really nice construction. I'm really, really happy with it. And it's waterproof. It's a great, great tent. I haven't used it yet. I'm not going to close this video out yet. I will close it out at the end of this trip when I've used it and see how warm it is because I've got the propane heater. I have a link to that uh, in the description below. And we'll just see how warm this tent gets in, in, uh, in like 5 to 10 degrees at night. So we'll see you here in a few minutes after about three or four days of camping. It's just a beautiful morning out here. The, so uh, I'm going to interrupt here because uh, Mike, uh, I'm going to go and talk about my tent and I'm going to get a better tent than Mike. I just want to let everybody know here. I've got to, I always got to outdo him, even though he's currently outdone me with the stove. Yeah. He told me he was going to get the, uh, the 10 by 12 or 10 by 14, the 10 by 14, 10 by 14. So you got a bigger tent. one. And so without telling him, I went ahead and got the uh, 12 by 12. Yeah. So now next time we go camping, he's going to have the 14 by 14. So I'm going to get the, I don't know if it, they do have a 14 by 14, but it's a Kodiak Outfitter tent. It's, it's similar to this one, but um, a little different configuration. But then they have a, a longer one, like a 20 footer. I don't think I really want that one, but you know, if I can outdo Mike, I will. Yeah. But what I want to do now is I want to just tell you about my experience with the tent as Mike goes and does whatever he does. And then I'm going to show you inside, but that'll be a separate video. But <laughs> Let me uh, move this camera around to show you the better tent here. It's not a better tent. It, it's just a different tent. And this one, you can see, it's uh, it, it, it actually easier to set up. I'm going to back the camera up here just a little bit. Of course, I got my shadow in the way. Never like to see my shadow. I think uh, it's supposed to scare some people or some animals. All right. So you can see it's uh, it's 14 feet long this way, 10 feet, and it's got one ridge pole. It's a real simple setup. And it's got these supports on either end, and then it's got these smaller supports here. And there's no there's no uh, poles on the corners. Now this is a four season tent, but it's not rated for heavy snow loads and really heavy or super cold winter weather. And I'm not sure why it's not rated for the super cold weather because it's, a lot, I think, the same material as Mike's tent. But I, I can tell, obviously, but if he had a bunch of snow, this wouldn't be as good as Mike's because Mike has a, a center pole also in his. If he has a bunch of snow, he can put that up and, and give him some, some more support. But what I really did want to tell you this week was after using it for about <clears throat> five days, getting down to as low as 12 degrees I, I think at the high in the night was 15 degrees the day is about 30 to 35 and it does get really cold inside if you don't if you don't have a heat source so i have a, a mr heater big buddy heater and with the 20 pound propane tanks mike and i both did the 20 pound pound propane tank connections there'll be information in the description below on that and uh, it worked really well. Now I have a portable buddy also, so I did a comparison between the two about how, how, how much of a, more it heats up the tent with the big buddy. So again, description below if you want to see that information. And it was about a 25, 26 degree difference over 30 minute period of time during the day, about 30 degree weather outside. To wrap this up with my opinion this week, this 10 by 14 is a great size for, for me for one person. Cause I have a big cot, I have two tables, I do some cooking, I have a place for my for my computer inside and, and all that. So it's, I like more room in the tent, so does Mike. On the heating part though, if your heat source goes out, you'll be in trouble. Cause it got down and I was seeing my breath at night, 20 degrees and lower inside the tent. So I would always say, make sure you have a backup heat source. Either I did make sure you have additional propane tanks. If you're using propane, and I even have the portable buddy, so if my big buddy goes out with the, with the portable, uh, the propane goes out, I can switch to my port portable buddy real quick. Now, you can also have the canisters on the big buddy, and you can plug those in and until you go maybe go get your other canister, your 20 pound uh, tank. Anyway, it, it worked really well, and the tent stayed cool. Here's what I did though at night, I ran it, uh, one night I ran it on medium. It was too cold for me. 
it didn't heat the tent up enough. And then the next night I ran it on high. But I had to make sure that the, when I was on high, I had, to put, I had to put the heater about seven, eight feet away from me to make sure it didn't get too hot. Now, one thing I noticed last night, I did have it about eight feet away from me. It was a little too cold. It, so I had to pull it a foot or two closer to me. So you'll have to play around with that. Uh, having because it's definitely colder on the outside of the tent near the walls and if you're too far away from your heat source it could be down low it, it's colder if you stand up it'll be nice and warm but down low when you're sleeping it's a bit colder so you you just got to make adjustments for how you like to sleep mike likes to sleep cold i don't like to sleep as cold so you just play with what you like and it, it's a great tent both of these are awesome tits. We're going to have some more reviews on both of these, how they set up, uh, how, the, how we heat them, how we lay them out, and hope you like it. So please like, subscribe, share, and turn on notifications so you'll see all of our videos as soon as they come out.